Just going back to organizational structure. Yeah. How is the way that you've thought about organizing operating companies at a holding company evolved over the years? Well, we're not a holding company as for, I mean, we did win, ironically, we did win a uh, uh, holding company award that just a few days ago, and I, I, somebody asked me for a quote on it, and I said, well, well the, the, uh, the organization that gave it to us asked for a quote, and I said, fortunately, we're not a holding company, so we were sort of mis, misclassified. Um, but, you know, the holding company is very vertical. Uh, and um, in fact, you know, people talk about simplification, but all they're doing is entrenching the verticals. I was, I was talking to somebody from, uh, from the Dentsu group just recently. And, you know, he said that what's happening there is instead of being, you know, the, the Japanese talk about one Dentsu, but what's actually happening from, and it's the same thing as Maurice Levy with one publicist, they talk about it, but then, which is the right way to do it. I mean, because I think you do have to be one. Uh, and the same thing applied with WPP. But what happens is you just entrench the verticals. All they're doing is entrenching the verticals. I mean, I'm told that, uh, that uh, the woman that came from DDB, DDB to, to run Dentsu International, Wendy Clark, is now, instead of having one Dentsu, is now making it into separate verticals. Not separate verticals, but reinforcing the verticals rather like you see at, at Publicis and WPP. And that goes against the idea. I mean, they all talk about seamless. They all waffle on about you know, how seamless they are. The reality is, you know, Victor Knapp, who runs along with Wes Taha, um, uh, our content practice, Media Monks, goes around the world taking pictures of, of Publicis lobbies where they say one, you know, one Publicis or you know, power of one or whatever it is. And then they have 26 different agency names underneath it. Makes no sense whatsoever. Now, having said that, it is true that when you slam these things together, uh, you lose value. And that's what's happened. I mean, I, I was, again, you, you see it at Publicis, you see it at Denso. You know, Maurice Levy had, I think, had the right strategy, but he insisted on sticking the Publicis name over Saatchi, and the agency has been destroyed. Burnett, the same. Why do you lose value? Person. Well, you lose value because, you know, these, these, these brands have, you know, there's a subtle balancing act in the holding company uh, sort of model. It's a subtle balancing act between trying to get everybody to work together and maintaining the strength of the brands. And I think you get caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. And, and the process is a long-term process, but unfortunately the market, which is focused on much short, shorter term uh, metrics, uh, you know, is looking for, for implementation at speed and and i think that's when you destroy value our model you know for we have uh, our mission is to build a new age new era advertising the new era new age advertising and marketing services model and to disrupt the old has four basic tenants or amendments you know if we say our constitution is that what i just described the amendments the first amendment is you know purely digital because that's where the growth is you know 20 percent growth next year but Digital will be 70% of media advertising spend uh, by uh, 2024. Secondly, this holy trinity of first party data driving the creation of digital advertising content being distributed through digital media in a continuous loop rather than like an election campaign without an election date. 24 7 it's in a 24 7 environment, it's ideally, ideally suited to that. Thirdly, faster, better, cheaper. Faster is about agility. Better is understanding 20 or so companies that you know, the hardware companies, the platforms, and the software companies, and then cheaper means efficiency. And then finally, our fourth principle is a unitary model, one seamless operation, one P&L, which we've, we've embarked on from the very beginning. So this wasn't something that was imposed like it has been in the holding company models, and the complications are just huge. I mean, CEOs wax lyrical about how their, their businesses are seamless and how they operate one PL. And when you actually get down to an operating level, it's complete BS. And you have people running individual brands for egotistical reasons, because they want to, you know, for, for good reasons, because they want to be successful and good people are egotistical uh, and they like to get credit for what they're doing. And they, what they do is, is, is very good. Uh, and they're not easy to, to manage. They're difficult to manage. So that, you know, you're doing that, um, and you're creating these verticals, and it makes it impossible to bring them together. So they tell the client, 
you know, when they're trying to win a piece of business or when they've, they've won it or kept it, how seamless and wonderful it's going to be. And it turns into a car crash. <laughs>